everyday thing what to give. Then when you think, give, oh Allah, I'm giving for my day. Oh Allah, I'm giving for my day. Please rescue me from the torment of the grave. Oh Allah, give me the companionship of your mercy in the grave. Oh Allah, the day no one going to avail you. The day everyone will leave you. Your wealth will leave you. Your property will leave, leave you. Your status will leave you. Everything is gone. You are alone. The day your status will never speak for you. Your parents will never speak for you. Your cars and your bungalows will never speak for you. The one going to speak for you is your deeds. They are going to speak for you. There is one subject that we don't like to hear. If possible, we try to avoid one subject which we may not like to listen. If, not, if can, just pass by. We try to avoid that subject. But it's up to you how you take it. Like Sister Sarah Tan, she read the book, she accepted Islam. She read the book, that subject, she accepted Islam. That was her motivation. I'm sitting here and talking about Islam and sharing Islam. Was that topic was my motivation, biggest motivation. My first motivation to come and preach to people, call people to Islam was this subject. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 185, Kullu nafsin za'ikatul maut. For every soul shall taste death. You see the, 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 the verse in Arabic, Kullu nafsin za'ikatul maut. It doesn't say you will die. You die. No. You will taste death. You will taste death. In other words, after tasting, you will come back. Allah will give you life. So every of us, whether they are believer or disbeliever, whether they are atheist, whether they are free thinker, whether they are Muslim, whether they are Hindu, whether they are Christian, regardless of your race, regardless of your religion, regardless of your background, regardless of your status, you knew deep in your heart that we all will die. Is there anybody here who will never die? So what is after that? What will happen after that? Nobody came back and tell us after they die, they came back and say, Say, Pavita, I died ready, but today I came back to tell you, you know, this, uh, the heaven is so beautiful, you know, the hell is like this. Nobody. Except, Amen. On Isra Me'araj, Allah show him. The first journey after that is where? The grave. You see, the first journey after that is the grave. And the grave is horrible place. Can you imagine when we was in PKP? We cannot leave our home. Some never leave the home for three months. And today I receive a call from Mary. He's my best friend. And a best friend, a good friend. This brother of mine called me today and he wanted to share his problem to me. Very first time he's sharing his problem to me. He called me, he has a problem. He said, this one man, he cannot focus his prayer. His prayer become not that used to be. And then he feel very tired and boring. He feels something missing ready. And he's a, big, uh, he's a big position in one of the big company. Good salary. So he called me, he said, my prayer, I have problem. Suddenly I don't have the interest. I don't have interest. I feel I'm far from God. And I asked him, what happened? And he was, while talking, he said, we work from home. In other words, five months he never leave his house. He got family, beautiful wife, beautiful children. But he never leave the house. He have to work from the house. Meaning what? Five months he doesn't leave the house. That's good enough. All kind of depression will take place. Am I correct? Not living in the house is going to be a depression. And thank God I told him, PKP, I took the opportunity to go out and serve people. We did. That released the stress. Can you imagine a person in this dunya put in the home with all the, the wife is there, the children is there, the food is there, everything is there, and yet he's going through depression. How about staying in Kubur? Can you imagine? How about staying in Kubur, in the grave, and, the, and not only just staying inside, there's an old called Liang Lahat, and you're there, and you are being covered by the soil, alone, no more handphone coming into your phone, uh, grave, nobody is going to give you your phone and call you, okay? And no parents will come, no children will come. Yes, the parents will come, the children will come, only how many days? There is a forgotten human being. Now the prophecy, when 
when the, the relative, the children, leave him from the grave. Allah will send two angels. They will ask you, who is your Lord? Man Rabbuka, who is your Lord? Man Nabiyuka, who is your prophet? And what is your book? Now if I will give you a test, simple test, who is your God? Pawita will say, Allah. If I was asked Saratan, who is your prophet? Prophet Muhammad. Eh? If I ask Firdaus, yeah, what is your book? He say Quran. But in the grave, do you can answer that way? In the grave, can you answer that way? No. It's your deeds help you. With your deeds that you, you do your five times prayer without missing. You do not miss your prayers. And you do on time. You fast in the month of Ramadan. You do charity. You go for Hajj. You kind to your parents. You do da'wah. All this will help you to answer. And then the two angels will leave you. If you do not answer them, they are going to wake you up. If the angel wake you, nobody to complain. Oh, the angel wake me. Allah permit. Worse still, Malik. The angel Malik was described in the Quran. When they go and plead to him, he would never even smile. They will plead in the hellfire, they will plead, give us water. So my question is that we know we will die, sooner or later. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe one year time, maybe two years time, it's a matter of time. When you reach my age, 50 something, it's coming faster. When you are 10 years old, you don't feel it. 15 years old, you don't feel it. 20 years old, you don't feel it. 30 years old, you still feel it. Not 40 years old, you still. The moment you reach 50 plus, you will feel more. The kubar is near. Especially you see your children growing up. You see? And you seeing your children getting married. It's all sign that you have to live one day. And that place that we're going to stay is horrible. Horrible. That brother staying five months, he's calling me and complaining to me. I know that all this. Then I give him a solution. What God in the Kubur, can we come back? It's dark. It's so dark and so cramped. You cannot even move your body this side, this side. Yeah, now can lah. You're sleeping, you turn down you my wife, your wife turn down you, uh, your child, you know. But in Kubur, you're no more one. So the prophet say, your Kubur can be a garden from paradise or in a hole from the hellfire. The prophecy. It can be a garden or it can be a hole. So what is our preparation? This is big. You know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a very pretty authentic hadith. He asked a question. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked a question. If today I ask you, La Sister Pavita, who do you think smart person? According to you, Pavita. Ah, Albert Einstein, a scientist. Am I correct? He's smart. Who is smart, Brother Afis, according to you? No, doctor. Some sister, who, according to you, who is clever? Lawyer. You admire them, correct? You admire them, right? Albert Einstein, doctor, engineer. But the Prophet said, the smartest of you who think of that and they prepare for it. Allahu Akbar. What the Prophet say? The smartest among you, the clever among you who think about that and prepare for it. Yes, very true. Meaning what? Prepare yourself with prayers. Prepare yourself with sadaqah. Prepare yourself with kindness with your family members. Prepare yourself, be truthful to your husband and wife. Prepare yourself, be loyal to your parents. Be patient with them. Charity, do charity. Go for knowledge, seek knowledge. Sit in the majlis of knowledge. Who are the smartest people? May Allah grant us this understanding. May Allah grant us this understanding that the smartest according to the Prophet, not engineer, not doctor, not professor, not mufti, not scholars, not astronauts, not economists. The smartest in Islam are those who remember that and prepare for the death. Remember why? When the moment that death comes to you, you're going to be alone, 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 alone. 
Your husband not going to avail you. The wife is not going to avail you. Your parents cannot rescue you. Your children cannot think of you. And this is a great motivation for me. That I came into this field of calling people to Islam and helping the rivers. Because I know that, that the saham, the share, the pahala, uh, the, the reward from Allah is great. The Prophet said, one person, I said that Islam, in your hand, if, if your humble hard work is greater than this world. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. So what can you do daily basis? What can one do daily basis to save ourselves from the torment of the grave? Can anybody suggest? Yeah, everybody pray five times a day. Everybody fast. You, would you like to become VIP? Yes. Every human being want to be, you want to wait in the long queue on that, understand? The grave is different. I want to be VIP. If I don't, if I cannot get VIP in the dunya, no problem, Aslan. No problem. Class. But I will make sure that we make, must make sure that we will be VIP from the grave until we meet Allah. We make sure that we will get the smart tech from the grave to the era to meet Allah. Don't no joke, brothers and sisters. That on the moment that comes to you, when you're in the circle till mouth, that's it. You're not going to come back. You're going to leave all your beloved one. You love so much your children. You love so much your wife. You love so much your, your husband. You love so much your parents. The moment that is coming, you are leaving them. And you will not come back to them. And they may not come back to you. My mom passed away five years ago. It's a trauma. I loved her so much. She's everything for me, my mother. My mother is everything for me. The moment she left, as if the, the world became end for me. The first day I feel that way. But later on, gradually, Allah gave companionship of children, wife. It go up. That's why Allah give our first companionship is our parents. Allah Rabbul Jalil Jalal who give us the best companionship is our parents. No one can replace our parents. And then later on when we grown up, we manja siki, we look for other one. You know, I know lah. Don't ask me lah. After got married, we think somebody else brought. Children, can I? So life is like this. So they become your companion stage by stage. Until one end, all your children leave you, going work, they got married, you stay at home. Bila cucu mau balik. Yes, that is happening. So the rest, one day you go. Kulum nafsim za'aikatul maul. Surely every soul shall test death. And the Prophet says, the smartest among you is the one who remember that and prepare for it. And no doubt, I'm not asking you or stopping you to admire to become engineer, ka, doctor, ka, scientist. Ka. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and be one. Be great, be intellectual. Go ahead, beat Albert Einstein. But the smartest of all this the one who remembers the death. And prepare for it. And if you have money, if you have money, don't know what to do, give it to IPSI. IPSI will build another building. And this building will stay for 100 years. And take Kiyama. And you don't want to give to IPSI, no problem. Build a mosque. Build a mosque in Africa, cheaper. In 100,000 US dollars, you can build a mosque in Africa. 100,000 times by 3 times 3, 380,000 ringgit. 380,000 ringgit, you can build a mosque. Now in New Zealand, in Queenstown, they want to build a mosque. In New York City, they're going to be the largest Islamic center, just by the Brits. Alhamdulillah, Allah give the opportunity in the day of Zul Hijjah, it's about 420 ringgit, the Brits. So when they build a building, your Brits are there. In the Day of Judgment, these bricks will talk to you. I have served. So we must be smart, intelligent, and not kudukud, mice, miser.
selfish. Every day think what to give. Then when you think, give, oh Allah, I'm giving for my day. Oh Allah, I'm giving for my day. Please rescue me from the torment of the grave. Oh Allah, give me the companionship of your mercy in the grave. Oh Allah, the day, no one going to avail you. The day, everyone will leave you. Your wealth will leave you. Your property will leave, leave you. Your status will leave you. Everything is gone. You are alone. The day, your status will never speak for you. Your parents will never speak for you. Your cars and your bungalows will never speak for you. The one going to speak for you is your deeds. They're going to speak for you. If the, the angel come from this side, your, your prayer should talk for you. When the angel come this side, your fasting should talk for you. When the angel come this way, your charity should talk for you. And the loser, the real loser, we entering the grave as a bankrupt of our deeds. May Allah protect us. May Allah give us His mercy. May Allah forgive all our sins. We have so much shortcoming in life. So much shortcoming. So much false. We are not in the time of the Sahaba. Even the Shaitan is afraid to see them, the Sahaba. We are not in the time of Sahaba. Even the Shaitan afraid to see the Sahaba. Today, Shaitan happy to see us. The Shaitan is glad to see us. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah hide the shame what we did. May Allah continue to forgive us and grant us the paradise, grant us the gardens in the grave. Amin, amin, Ya Rabbul Alamin. Okay, what is the topic today? Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to IPSA channel to support our dawah efforts. Jazakallah khair.